Oi, Shogun, we don't want you anymore. Let's get that Emperor back. Hello there, I'm Simon. Welcome to my channel. Today's topic is more history. Yes! More so, I finally get to talk about Hakodenshin Ryu Jujutsu, which happens to be the style of martial arts that I practice. So without further ado, let's go. So where do I begin? Well, Jujutsu is a Japanese style, so it may surprise you that I'm going to start this tale in China. Around the 5th century, monks in Tibetan and Chinese monasteries developed massaging techniques which they turned into self-defense techniques. Those techniques came to Japan, where they became known as the Chinese techniques, or the empty hand techniques, because the same kanji can have both meanings. And they evolved. Many Japanese warrior families developed their own versions and styles of these techniques. The first mention we get of Japanese martial arts is in the 9th century, with Prince Teijun Fujiwara. And I just realized how many Japanese terms and names I'm about to mispronounce. Anyway, Teijin was the son of the 56th Emperor of Japan, Seiwa Fujiwara. He developed his techniques and called them Aikijutsu, which if I'm not mistaken means harmonious techniques. And then he taught them to his own son, Tsumemoto. Tsumemoto went on to found the Minamoto clan, thus Aikijutsu techniques became the family secret of the Minamoto, passed on through the generations. The Minamoto became kind of legendary, and they had a couple of important figures. Probably the most famous was General Yoshimitsu Shinri Saburo Minamoto. Yeah, that guy. Yoshimitsu was quite the Romo Universale, or whatever the Japanese term for that is. He knew a lot about martial arts, poetry, psychology, history, etc. He developed the Atemi arts, which uses strikes to vital parts of the body, and the Kanzetsu arts, which is all about breaking techniques. He is also seen as the original founder of the Daito Ryu school. But the only reason I find for this is that he lived in a mansion called the Daito Mansion. So make of that what you will. Anyway, Yoshimitsu taught these techniques to his own son, Yoshimitsu Yoshikiyu. And it was this guy who was the first to take the name of Takeda. A name that may or may not sound familiar to you. I don't know how familiar you are with Japanese history. But the Takeda clan is quite important in it. In fact, the Takeda Mon, which is like the coat of arms, later became the logo of Hakodenshin Ryu. So the Takeda lived in a province called Kai. And they opposed the formation of the Tokugawa Shogunate. I've talked about Tokugawa before, so I'll leave a link to that video somewhere. Hey, look at that! I get to reference myself! How neat! So Tokugawa was a shogun, the highest military leader and the de facto boss of Japan, from 1600, when he won the Battle of Sekigahara, until the Meiji Restoration in 1868. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So back in the 16th century, the Takeda had to leave the Kai province, and in 1581, they went north and settled in the province of Aizu, where they went to work as swordmasters. The last of these swordmasters was Takeda Takumi no Kami Sumo, and he had two main students, or two that were the most important, at least. And they were his grandson, Takeda Soyoshi, and one Saigo Tanamo, who was the lord of Aizu. And then the Meiji Restoration happened. The Meiji Restoration was basically the people saying, Oi, Shogun, we don't want you anymore. Let's get that emperor back. Except they would have said it in Japanese. You get the idea. Now, Takeda Tsuyoshi had actually led a militia against the emperor, and he was executed for it. His friend Saigo was spared and went into a monastery to become a priest. He took the name of Hoshina Shikanori. Now, Takeda Soyoshi did have a son called Takeda Sokishi. In order to continue the family tradition, Sokishi's first son, Takeda Sokatsu, joined Saigo in the monastery to learn the Daito style from him. Why couldn't Sokishi just teach him himself? I don't know. 
I think he was actually focusing on sumo wrestling, but don't quote me on that. And then tragedy struck, because in 1875, Sokatsu passed away. And so the last hope for the surviving of the family art lay with Sokatsu's brother, Takeda Sokaku. Takeda Sokaku Masayoshi Minamoto, to give his full name. He was a pretty awesome guy, and he might actually have been the last of the legendary samurai. He was supposedly very small, but he was incredibly ambitious, which gave him the nickname Kotengu, which means little devil. Sokaku spent a big chunk of his life traveling around Japan, studying martial arts, and engaging in duels all over the place. Imagine the classic gunslinger, except he's a samurai. A swordslinger? Finally, in 1898, Sokaku accepted the leadership of the Daito Ryu school. Are you still following these people? Leave a comment if you got this far. Alright, let's keep going. Now, one of the sensei or teachers at Daito Ryu was a man named Hasuka Matsuda, and he was the one teaching the more gifted students. One of these students was called Yoshiharu Okuyama. Later on, Yoshiharu would assume the name Ryuho Okuyama, which means Spine of the Dragon. Now, if you've ever practiced Hakoryu, or any style that evolved from it, this name should sound familiar to you. Because Ryuho Okuyama was the founder of Hakoryu. But not yet. At this point, Okuyama was still a student at the Daito Ryu School of Martial Arts which is not really the official name, but let's be honest, it should be, because it sounds awesome. I'm getting off track. Yoshiharu Okuyama was born on February 21st, 1901, and he was part of the Takeda clan. We don't know a lot about his youth, but he studied medical science and various martial arts. When he was 23, he was accepted into the political school of Tokyo, which is called... Oh boy. Tokyo Seiji Gakko, and three years later he graduated. Yay! Now after that he did a bunch of work for the government, and so he traveled around a lot. It is on these travels that he met several great masters of different styles of martial arts. And well, he studied with them, learning a bunch of styles that I'm not trying to pronounce, and eventually Hakoryu was born from the combination of all these. In 1936, Okuyama got his instructor's license at Daito Ryu, and he got to meet Shihan Takeda Sokaku. Thus, he got to learn the hidden techniques. He quickly became Sokaku's personal assistant, and in 1938, he published an article titled <sighs> Daito Ryu Goshin Jutsu, which means the Daito Ryu system of self-defense. Soon after, he founded the Dai Nippon Shidokai, or Union of the Great Japanese Samurai, and started teaching his own style. His dojo was in the city of Asahikawa, but he moved it the next year to Tokyo, and he founded the Dai Nihon Shidokai. You'll notice there's no Daito Ryu in that title, because this was the first actual separation from the Daito Ryu. Let's get back to Takeda Sokaku. He was getting rather old now, and people were starting to question his leadership capabilities. So I think it makes sense that Okuyama, who was Sokaku's personal assistant, was kinda hoping for a promotion. But in the end, his son Takeda Takimune was appointed his successor, meaning all hope was lost for Okuyama, who promptly decided not to use his knowledge for financial gain, but to share it for the good of his country. He started working on his own style, and ended up creating Hakoryu. On the 1st of June, 1941, a ceremony was held to introduce a style to the kami, or the spirits, or gods, and Hakoryu was born. During the Second World War, Okuyama joined a sect in the Yamagata prefecture to pray for peace. you think a great diplomat like him might have had a more active role, but I guess a world war was just a bit too much, even for him. After the war, he moved to the Saitama prefecture, where he founded his main dojo, the Hakojuku Hombu Dojo. While his life was getting back to normal, he turned away from politics, and began focusing on Hakoryu and Kohoshiatsu. 
Yeah, that's another thing he developed. Koshiatsu means imperial way of massaging, and it's basically acupressure. It's a way of using pressure points to heal people. We're getting close to the present now, and that history is kind of still in the make, so there's not actually that much left to tell. In 1986, Shodai Soke Ryuho Okuyama abdicated and left the leading of his dojo to his son, Nidai Soke Toshio Okuyama who is still leading it today. Ryu Okuyama eventually passed away on November 26, 1987. Ten years later, a couple of Shihan founded the federation Kodoko Renmei, which was to be led by Soke Antonio Garcia for Europe and Soke Michael La Monica for North America. From Kodoko Renmei, Hakodenshin Ryu was born, which means Heart of the Eighth Light. And now, we're here. Phew! That was a lot of history. I hope you made it all the way through. Leave a comment down below if you did. Anyway, I think it's about time for... The YouTube thing. Oh yes. You know the drill, guys. Comment, like, subscribe, share the video, ring the bell, check the links below for my social media, and check out my channel for more content. So, thanks for watching!